man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. The challenge today is how countries can improve living standards without wrecking the planet. In Climate Challenge, we scour the world for promising schemes and new technologies, both global and local, that might make a difference. Industry and transport are seen as major polluters, but a quarter of greenhouse gas released into the atmosphere comes from changes in land use, especially the destruction of forests. We believe that in the next decade or so, we are going to have a year, a very dry year, when uh, emissions of, of carbon from tropical forests associated with deforestation and with burning, accidental burning, are going to exceed emissions from fossil fuel combustion. That's how big this thing is. On an accumulated basis, deforestation is responsible for about a third of the total greenhouse gas buildup in the atmosphere. So because it is a big part of the problem, it should be a big part of the solution as well. And so the idea then is to use the carbon market and other incentives to try and reduce the rate at which forests are being lost. In this edition of Climate Challenge, we focus on the efforts to reward those who not only plant, but more significantly preserve forests. In the jargon, it's called avoided deforestation. When international efforts were made to cut carbon emissions with the Kyoto Protocol, avoided deforestation was left out. There are lots of players in the international community who say it should be included, earning credits for indigenous and other forest people with sustainable lifestyles, as well as poor farmers who should be given an incentive not to fell the forest. Trees take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to grow, but they have other benefits too. We're trying to really generate triple benefits. Atmospheric benefits, that is the global climate, uh, environmental benefits at the local uh, scale, and community benefits in terms of livelihood improvements. That's why planting trees can generate credits under the UN Carbon Trading Scheme called the Clean Development Mechanism, or CDM. But forestry accounts for very little of the total trade in carbon, as it's easier and more profitable to eliminate industrial gases than plant thousands of trees. When plantations are created, they are often monocultures of fast-growing species, good for business, but bad for diversity. Currently, no credit is given under the CDM for conserving existing forests. One of the major weaknesses of the Kyoto Protocol was it did not allow credits for avoiding deforestation. Deforestation currently puts in about 20% of all carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But not only that, deforestation has very adverse effects on biodiversity, water resources. So to me, it's absolutely essential that we find a way to get avoided deforestation into any future regulatory regime. It is a bit strange that uh, deforestation is not in the Kyoto Protocol. Um, if we look back at the history of the ne negotiations, there was early opposition to the idea because some NGOs and the Brazilian government were both very concerned that this would take pressure off the big emitters, the developed countries. And, and the feeling was you've got to keep the pressure on those countries and the way they produce energy and the, what their transport systems are to, to really come up with some long-lasting changes. We had governments that were trying to set policy. We had technocrats and scientists who were trying to be the smartest person around the table. And we had the environmental NGOs that were split and were basically playing their cards on both sides. So when you had all three dynamics on the battlefield at the same time, we went nowhere. In 2006, at the UN Climate Change Conference in Nairobi, the role played by forests in mitigating or stabilizing climate change was a recurring theme. Join the Billion Tree Campaign! Nobel Peace Prize winner Wangari Matai launched a campaign to plant a billion trees globally in 2007. This is something that anybody can do. Anybody can dig a hole, 
Anybody can put a tree in the hole and water it. And everybody must make sure that the tree they plant survives. Also in Nairobi, the World Bank signed a deal with the Green Belt Movement, founded by Matai. From this reforestation project, the World Bank's biocarbon fund will purchase 375,000 tonnes of carbon emissions reductions. The biocarbon fund is one of the nine carbon funds uh, currently administered by the World Bank. And it's uh, very much a, um, a pioneer uh, in the sense that it is buying uh, credits from uh, projects that sequester or conserve carbon in uh, forests and uh, agroecosystems. Seller who plants uh, trees, reforests a degraded area, can then claim credit and sell those credits to the biocarbon fund. And the biocarbon fund is a set of uh, 14 investors, we call them participants, who then use the credits that are generated by these projects to meet part of their obligations under the Kyoto Protocol. The first stage of the biocarbon fund amounts to $53.8 million, and investors include governments and companies that wish to offset their emissions, specifically with forestry projects. This deal was signed at the Nairobi forest that Wangari Matai saved from developers. It will use the carbon market to pay for the reforesting of 1,900 hectares. What I see this initiative is really bringing um, the kinds of benefits that we're seeing in other countries on carbon finance and the financial flows to people, real people, that are working um, to improve their communities, to work, improve their environments. It's bringing it to the women of Kenya and to the communities and their children. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us.